is concerned that female genital mutilation in eastern Uganda, particularly the districts of Amudat, Moroto and Nakapiripit, continues unabated even with, a, even with a law in place. Now the cost of treatment of health complications resulting from female circumcision is estimated at 1.4 billion US dollars per year and with this expected to rise unless urgent action is taken towards its abandonment. Tonight we speak to Pauline Nawire, a program officer at National Association Association of Women's Organization in Uganda about the persistence of this practice. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Good evening to Mildred. Nice meeting you. Pleasure having you. Yeah. Uh, Pauline, am I right to say that the fight against female genital mutilation has yielded results? Yeah, I can say it has to some extent. The reason why I'm saying so, like for example in Amdat, we have seen girls running away from their homes coming to our rescue centers. And to me, I feel the information has reached the community. The girls know what they are supposed to do and they understand their rights. Mm. So it has, to a smaller extent, yielded results. Though we need more interventions where government has to come in. Mm. Okay, so today you, we met at a breakfast meeting where you were presenting a, a policy brief and uh, uh, I, I happened to be there and I saw some of these pictures, and I think I was sharing with you, and I told you up to now I'm still trembling, and uh, I've not been the same since I saw them in the morning. Imagine I'm feeling like that, and uh, how about that girl or that woman that has gone through this kind of act? How do they feel? Yeah, actually, Mildred, what I want to tell you is the act is dehumanizing. It psychologically tortures the girls and women they do not remain the same. Uh, early on I said you may speak to somebody the same thing like three times but you realize the person has that trauma because of the act. Yeah. Okay. Then you talked about uh, the, the, the government coming in to uh, help with some interventions. What are some of those interventions that you think the government can put in place to ensure that this act is actually curbed? Actually, one of the interventions is to promote education. I am glad that there is an initiative by the president where they opened a school in Queen, is Kosil Girls. And I think it's the reason why FGM is a bit low in the Sebei region than in the, the Karamoja region. Mm. We realize illiteracy level in Karamoja is around 95%. And the other side is a bit lower. And also, you realize that when people are educated, they understand the dangers of female genital mutilation and they restrain, they, like, they shun the act, mm. unlike the illiterate category of people. Mm. Yeah. So, so now, mm. education is key, uh, but also there should be a multisectoral sensitization approach we have to adopt where all sectors, health, education, judiciary, we all have come together, NGOs, to do massive sensitization and enable these girls access education. Mm. Yeah. So now as NAWU is uh, one of the organizations that have been at the forefront in fighting uh, FGM through a number of projects, I would like you to share with us your experience in trying to implement or in trying to put an end to FGM. Yeah, our experience, specifically in Karamoja, we have encountered several challenges. One of them is the porous borders. You realize people cross and have mutilation the other side of Kenya, then they come back. Um, this very month, we were in Moroto, in a particular health center, and we realized we did a small survey as we were there. We realized out of the 20 young mothers who give birth, 15 of them are mutilated, and the scars are fresh. Willingly or unwillingly? Uh, we didn't go into those details. We wanted to understand the rate at which female gent gentle mutilation is currently. Mm. So in most cases, these people are coerced. Some of them give birth, like those who go for traditional birth attendance, they are mutilated during the process of giving birth, mm. which is really not right, it's against their will, but they are lied that when you do not mutilate, 
you will not give birth. Mm. So they end up being mutilated. Mm. Yeah. And what have you done as now to actually say that this has this kind of act stops? Yeah, one of the things we do is we have community structures. They have actually helped us so much because they live within the community. They understand the dynamics of the community. And th these acts always happen. The plans happen within the community. So when somebody lives within the community will know when they are planning. So when they get to know, they report to authorities. Uh, I'll give an example in particular in Karamoja where the community structures rescued an 11-year girl from female genital mutilation. They were planning to take her for mutilation and they had to go to police report. And of course the relatives, the parents were arrested. Mm. We are glad that that happened at that point. Uh, that one now takes me to, to the law. We have the Prohibition of Female Genital Mutilation 2010 Act. Uh, it is in place but the implementation is not really pleasing. Let me use that word that it's not pleasing. Because you realize few cases are actually handled properly in courts of law. Uh, the evidence is that is required in courts of law is really high and sometimes it is deterring, it hinders people from reporting cases. What kind of evidences do they ask for? Um, let me use the, the Sebei side example. One time they went to court and the magistrate was asking for the products cut, which is really very hard. And you know, if you ask for such, then you're trying to block justice. Then also there was another incident in Karamoja where the other actors did their part, cases presented to court, and someone comes and says, we, you are warned. And yet the act is there. Mm. Why do you warn when the act is actually in place? So in your policy brief, uh, it was indicating the challenges and gaps in implementing the FGM. As we conclude, what are some of the recommendations that NAU with their partners uh, have actually put in place or are proposing to have this act turned around to see that it fights against uh, FGM? Yeah, one of the things I can talk about is we really want to see that this act is reviewed and amended. Uh, the little I know, after 10 years... As we conclude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Af after 10 years, laws are supposed to be reviewed and we would like that the prohibition of female genital mutilation is reviewed and one of the, t the key clauses they should include is protection of the law enforcers. We have had incidences where they go to the community to execute their duties and they are harassed. Uh, also would like to see like the measures should be taken higher. Uh, I'm giving an example of the 12 of currents real as a fine. It is not really deterring enough. Mm. Someone will say it's okay, I will pay the 12 of currents and I get out of it. Mm. So it's important that we put deterring measures to make sure that this practice ends. Thank you so much, uh, Pauline Nawire, a program officer at NAU. And uh, that backdrop of that information will guide our conversation tonight on the poll question. And we're asking that you comment on why efforts to end female gender